So hello, my colleagues, and I do hope everyone is well. Um, chapter 2, I want to talk about Chapter 2 a little bit here. And Chapter 2 um, discusses companies' usage of financial statements to communicate financial information uh, to the investment community, the shareholders, the stakeholders, okay, and uh, and the like, and you know, to, to everyone else to determine how well the company's doing. It's basically they're, they're looking to their health for the most part, and we all have to assume that they're all legitimate um, um, statements and that there's no uh, games going on, even though a lot of times there is. So we're going to look at four main types of uh, financial statements here. And uh, these are presented in a little different way than most books, I believe. Uh, so we'll look at the, how they define them. Okay, so fin these financial statements, again, they're accounting reports. Uh, and it has, you know, past performance information, mostly like a qu every quarter or a year. That is, are issued periodically, and as I said, quarterly or annually. Uh, so annually, they're issued as, on, as 10K. They're called 10Ks. And the quarterly statements are called 10Qs. That's you know, it's just the name they get them, Q for quarterly. So the quarterly reporting form that U.S. companies use to file their financial statements. And... This is the annual form that U.S. companies use to file their statements. All right, now these are for public companies, right? They must also send an annual report with their financial statements to their shareholders. And I get those every year. I get an annual report. I get them electronically, okay? So the yearly summary of uh, business uh, sent by U.S. Uh, public companies to their shareholders that are companies or includes the financial statement. All right. Private companies often prepare, you know, financial statements as well, but they usually do not have to disclose their reports to the public. So there's, you know, the private companies do it too, but they, they, they're they not forced to tell everybody. All right. So there's a term here that's real important, right? And it's called... Uh, generally accepted accounting principles and these are basically common sets of rules let's let's click on that a common set of rules and a standard format for public companies to use when they prepare their financial reports all right so everything is standardized okay so basically uh these statements again to show that they're legitimate, a neutral third party known as an auditor to check the annual financial statements, a neutral third party that corporations are required to hire that checks the annual financial statements to ensure they are prepared according to JAP and to verify that the information is reliable. All right, and, and now you can read this on your own. There's basically international financial reporting standards also, okay? So these are international, and, uh, and this is uh, international IFRS, and let me just highlight this here, okay? And there's an international accounting standards board, so let's just highlight that, okay? So, uh, so basically, there are some uh, minor differences between U.S. JAP and uh, and IFS, and they go through that here. And you could kind of uh, read up on on what the differences are. All right. So eventually, uh. They tried to converge both of them, and, and U.S. JAP uh, and IFRS, uh, uh, we tried to converge through the Sarbanes-Oxley Act and you should uh, Accounting Act of 2002 because of a lot of scandals that took place. So um, you you should, on your own, read up on what is Sarbanes-Oxley. And there was a provision there to 
for companies to move uh, toward convergence on that. Anyway, so they, this at some point there should be convergence. So uh, as of 2018, the SEC looks likely to allow U.S. companies to use IFRS. Now I don't know if that actually ever happened. All right, so. Let's move on here. All right, so there's basically uh, four financial statements, okay, we're going to talk about, right? The balance sheet, there's a balance sheet, the income statement, the statement of cash flows, and the statement of stockholders' equity. Okay, so there's also a thing called the retained earnings statement, but I think in your book they kind of combine that here and they don't discuss that. So this is a little different than I've seen in other, you know, other, other treatments, but there's also a statement of retained earnings. I don't know why it's jumping down to the bottom today like that, but. All right, so so the first one I want to talk about here is the uh, the balance sheet, and what is a balance sheet? How is they do they define it in your book? And it's simply a list of assets and liabilities that provides a snapshot of the financial position at a given point in time. So I mean, you could do a balance sheet on your own personal finances, right? And and people do that, right? What do I have and what do I owe? Uh, you know, I'm in a hole. Okay. So here's the balance sheet for some company, which I don't think really exists. And here's the way it's broken down. If we draw a line right down the middle here, right? If we draw a line down the middle. So you can see here, I drew a line down the middle, red line. On this side are the assets. Right? And here are the liabilities and stockholders' equity. Okay, so here's the liabilities, the current liabilities, the long-term liabilities, current assets, long-term assets. And here is the stockholders' equity. Okay, so current assets and current liabilities are considered short-term, okay, short-term uh, assets and short-term liabilities and notice here we have long-term notice here we have long-term assets and liabilities so this it's divided between long and short and at the very bottom at the very bottom we have total assets and over here we have total stockholders total liabilities and stockholders equity and there's something you should notice right off the bat here and There's something you should notice right here that on the left hand side and the right hand side the balance sheet should always be equal you see these numbers how they're the same okay all right so I just wanted to make that point clear so the left-hand side shows its capital, how it uh, uses its capital and investments, and the right-hand side summarizes where this capital comes from. Okay, so that's uh, important. And as I say, the left and right side must balance. So here's an important point. The, and I'm going to highlight that in green, right? Assets equal liabilities plus stockholders' equity. So you saw all that. All right, so let's look at uh, assets a little bit here. So current assets, again, I said are short-term. 
and they're either cash or assets that could be converted into cash within a year okay so current or uh, cash or assets that could be converted into cash within one year or right this category includes any marketable securities or stocks you uh, shares of stocks you may have in another company okay so it would be like you personally own shares right you could sell them in an instant right accounts receivable is money that you are owed by people who bought stuff from you let's say people buy you a product on a credit card um they you know you're out until uh, they they get they pay their credit card bill right inventories um any inventories that you have that you you want may want to get rid of now inventories could be a very complicated problem okay it usually comes in three levels raw materials half finished materials and final uh, materials and then there's prepaid expenses such as rent and insurance okay All right, so so other current assets is a catch-all category that includes items such as prepaid expenses, rent or insurance, paid in advance. Okay. All right, so and again, this is short term. This is considered short term. All right. So, so this here, so here I wrote the word short term, right? So this is considered short term. All right, so let's go to uh, long term assets. All right, so long term assets uh, is again anything greater than a year, right? Net property, plant, and equipment as well as property not used in business operations, startup costs in connection with a new business, investments in long-term securities, and property held for sale. So this is a net property, plant, and equipment. So these include assets, so real estate, machinery, tangible benefits for more than a year, okay? So any so let's say they spent two million. Uh, this will be included with property, plant, and equipment. All right. Now an important point of long-term assets is that because equipment tends to wear out or become obsolete over time, they will reduce the value of this equipment, and there's a term called depreciation expense, an amount deducted for accounting purposes from an asset's value to reflect wear and tear over a given period. All right. The cumulative depreciation, uh, now this is the over time for all the de depreciation you've taken, up to a given point in its life, equal to last period's accumulated depreciation, plus the current period's depreciation expense. Now as you depreciate, as you depreciate, um, basically you get down to what's called a book value. You're reducing the book value, and actually they refer to that here. Okay, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. So the acquisition cost of an asset less its accumulated depreciation is its book value, okay? All right, so so you can see uh, that's where how they have the uh, book value. And you can see right here, under here, and here is the long-term assets. Whoops. Oh, I guess I can't highlight that. But here is the uh, accumulated depreciation. So, so here is the accumulated uh, depreciation. So everyone can see that. Okay. So you're writing things down. You notice that's negative, right? All right. So... So here, so that's what what's called the book value, okay? All right, so this is about uh, 15 minutes long, and uh, when I, when I make the next one, we'll pick up. I'll pick up uh, right here, okay?